Hi, I'm Dr. Ron Gimbel, the Chair of the Department of Public Health Sciences at Clemson University, presenting today with my colleague, Dr. John Vina, also from the Department of Public Health Sciences, but at the Medical University of South Carolina. Wish I was there in Zagreb with you, but can't be, so this is our brief presentation on Rural Health Innovation Partnership aimed at improving outcomes and equity in South Carolina. A little bit about our two universities. The Medical University was founded in 1824 and operates six colleges and a health system, trains about 3,000 health profession students in any given year, and about 600 or 800 physician residents. In contrast, Clemson University was founded in 1889 as a public land grant university, operates seven colleges, is a Carnegie R1 research institution, and has a student base of about 26,000 undergraduate and graduate students. It's important to note that none of our academic programs uh, overlap, so we really don't compete. Our two institutions don't compete. We're located in opposite sides of the state, uh, but our programs are very synergistic in nature, which really enhances partnership opportunities. A little bit about South Carolina. Our state is located on the southeast coast of the United States between Georgia and North Carolina. It's relatively small with just over 5 million people. About a third of the state are 55 years or older. 46 counties, a lot of counties, uh, and about 20 or more are designated rural in nature. Like many rural communities, there are barriers to care and barriers to living, healthy living. Early on in our collaboration, we built and developed this model for, to guide us in what we were going to do. So here you see four different topical areas that we were to operate in. First and foremost is chronic disease and cancer, mental and behavioral health, and children and women's health. Part of our model was to include and embed paraprofessionals into agricultural extension offices located in our target counties. Those individuals were trained on health concepts and were charged with uh, promoting health programming, delivering health programming, and above all, building trust in those communities. Part of our program was expanded cancer screening and lifestyle interventions. Part of our program was aimed at trying to break addiction and transition adults off of opioid dependency, and other programs were aimed at the schools, trying to improve health and trying to uh, introduce gardening and healthy eating and healthy living to children. During our partnership, or during the original collaboration in 2018-2019, MUSC acquired four rural hospitals, which is a big, big event for that uh, university. Two of these hospitals, Florence and Marion, pictured at the top, uh, are located in the PD region, which is one of the most rural and hard-hit regions of our state. Lancaster and Chester are located in the Midlands region, also very rural. Like many of you, we've been hit pretty hard in our state with COVID-19. It's turned things on its head and has stopped some of our preventive services and a lot of our efforts and caused us to kind of reshift and rethink a little bit. So right now our partnership, Medical University of South Carolina and Clemson partnership is about is in transition to COVID-19 work uh, in particular, we're starting with community-wide COVID-19 screening. A lot of aging adults, a lot of people in rural communities without transportation don't have the ability to travel to go get COVID-19 screening, so we bring this screening to them. What you see pictured on the left is one of our drive-through community COVID-19 screening sites as we were setting it up. The idea is that when we're operating the individuals stay in their automobiles and just drive through the tents, get screening, and go out the other side. 
you'll see our van. This is one of our mobile vans that are co-branded between our two institutions. We've also enhanced and really launched uh, virtual clinics uh, into rural areas by leveraging our WebEx, WebEx technology into our clinical workflow. We also that's allowed us to deliver primary care into rural practices and allowing patients, whether they have a computer or with a smartphone, to be able to uh, um, access care remotely, which has made a world of difference. We're in the process of integrating uh, our WebEx virtual visits into MyChart, which is a mobile health solution aligned with our electronic health record, Epic. Another component and where we're moving in our program is looking at remote home-based monitoring for COVID-19 and chronic disease, both. Uh, pictured here was one of my own studies. I worked with the Department of Defense in de modifying their mobile health platform for a couple of years now uh, to support diabetes and self-management care of diabetes. Um, this, this study allowed uh, and focused on patient activation, trying to activate patients to do more self-management and take better care of themselves, incorporated different devices, blood pressure, scale, glucose activity monitors, and now a pulse oximeter. We're modifying that platform for COVID-19. We've built in clinical safety algorithms and associated tailored messaging. So as their devices, if they send signals that are in alert status, uh, those messages guide the patients on what to do. And there's a remote monitoring panel, a back end for clinicians, so we can monitor how those patients are doing. Our target during COVID-19 is for patients with congestive heart failure and diabetes as adults. If you want to know more about the intervention, the DOI number is there. We just published our uh, results of the diabetes paper and the intervention uh, in the Journal of Medical Internet Research, which is open access for you. Another key component of our partnership program is the use of mobile vans. We've been using mobile health clinic vans to support seniors care and support gap care in communities for over 30 years. Pictured on the left is a large mobile care, uh, mobile health clinic van that includes three exam rooms, a bathroom, and a little laboratory area. And then on the right are sprinter runabout vans that we purchased for the purposes of uh, providing this care into rural communities. Um, the sprinter van is a little small for a COVID-19 environment, both of which of these are four-wheel drive so that we can get into muddy environments, farms, or wherever we need to go to bring care innovatively to the patients. These vans both have the capability of connecting telehealth visits, so we can literally bring access, primary care access or specialty care right into these rural agricultural uh, environments. Where are we going for the foreseeable future? Our focus is going to be on screening and treatment of COVID-19, but then really on recovery. As patients have been isolated, um, they have had their food sources interrupted. Many of them have been unable to really leave their home or travel into environments where they can exercise and do the sorts of things they should be doing. So we anticipate that as COVID-19 transitions, uh, we're gonna see a big recovery period. We're gonna see a spike in premature death. We're, from chronic disease, we're gonna see a need for very tailored action. So the three areas that we're focusing on are preventable hospitalization, reducing that. That's a lot of the uh, diabetes care, uncontrolled diabetes, uncontrolled hypertension, heart failure patients, that sort of thing. Uh, reducing premature death rate um, by not only 
uh, monitoring uh, high-risk patients with co from COVID-19, but also really working on heart disease, really working on uh, accidental drug overdose, accidents, and other things that contribute to a premature death uh, before the age of 75. And finally, we'll be working on improved healthy behaviors, those behaviors that um, patients have been ignoring during COVID-19 or just haven't been had an opportunity to really address them. The partnership is growing uh, deeply and by the day. Cancer is uh, kind of subsumed there under premature death, a major effort on uh, coordinating remote cancer screening for breast, cervical cancer, prostate cancer, and other type of cancer behaviors. Again, I wish I was there with you, but that's not possible. So I hope to speak with you during questions and answers. Thank you.